Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to F1 Manager 23 Hardcore Series. Tonight, it's round nine of season five. We are heading to the circuit Gilles Villeneuve in Montreal for the Canadian Grand Prix. tonight i'm hoping we can go even faster as we have got new underfloors coming for our cars in time for this canadian grand prix uh a quick note uh, apologies for the uh the farce <laughs> effectively that was our attempt to stream the uh, spanish grand prix uh qualifying got broken up into two parts <laughs> the race got broken up into two parts uh for those of you that did miss it uh i did um just record the last hour of footage of the race itself after the stream cut out again and then posted that as a separate video i think we lose maybe two or three laps uh in between when the stream cut off and the rate and the uh, the other footage started up but the conclusion of that race is available on the channel so if you haven't seen that it is there for you and uh hopefully tonight will go a little bit smoother um we shall see but you know keeping my fingers crossed that the internet plays ball tonight really don't know why it kept putting out like that yeah. we shall see right uh let's get prepped for tonight uh so we don't have a weather forecast just yet uh we have got car parts that have failed we need to get those dealt with in a moment uh let's see they can see the underfloor is being manufactured. We've got one that's going to be ready. Oh, no, that's not what I want to look at. There we go. Uh, so we've got one that's ready in four days. The second one will be ready in 11 days. Uh, in fact, actually, we should already have one now. So we'll have a second one in four days and then a spare uh, in time for the Grand Prix, uh, which is awesome. Now let's see what needs to be replaced. Uh, we need new rear wings. It would seem. Uh, a new front wing needed. Let's install that. Uh, new underfloor. Well, we have now got that brand new one. There it is. And there you can see the improvement from the current spec to the new spec. We're gaining uh, 0.25 kilometers an hour. Getting a little boost to acceleration. A nice little bit of a boost to our downforce. Um, a decent little boost to our dirty air performance and we're stripping a little bit of extra weight off the car as well uh, so hopefully that will all come together nicely let's get that installed on car two there we go uh, so do i need to make any other spares let's have a look probably do with another rear wing maybe we'll leave it as is for now side pods are okay got a spare and i've got one that's about to break so that will be my spare but we haven't done another round of updates yet so um we'll hang off on making any more spares just yet do need to start thinking about my uh, mid-season upgrades my summer upgrades uh in time for hopefully spa but if not definitely in time for monza so we'll let this round of research uh, complete and then we'll start looking at maybe getting some more upgrades on the car. Let's take a look at our facilities. Everything in here is okay. The suspension simulator getting a little close to uh, braking. We can get that fixed when we need to. Team hub is fine. Scouting department's fine. Race sim is fine. Operational facilities, everything in here. Okay. The helipad is going to break soon. Memorabilia is going to break soon. We can get those fixed when that happens. So let's advance a bit of time. Okay, side pod research is done. Uh, what's my cost cap situation looking like? I've only got 54 mil left. So, for now, just going to keep going a little bit more on the research side. I haven't done a front wing research project yet. Let's get one of those started. Use up the last of these hours from this month. And 
everything's going to get that little tweak. Let's make sure... I mean, our brakes are already really good. They're at 80%, so I'm not too worried about the brake balance. Would like to improve our airflow a little bit. Let's go with that. And we'll go with two engineers. And there we go. That project is up and running. So that's the last of our hours for this month done. Uh, so when the suspension finishes, then we can start thinking about another round of physical upgrades on the car. Uh, board confidence check-in. Uh, high confidence. Uh, you can see delighted with the result in Barcelona, if not the way we achieved it by constantly having to stop the stream. Uh, objectives, we still know that's good because that's from last season. So yeah, it's all looking very good. And we still got that little cost cap break on there, uh, which we need to get rid of. But uh, it's coming along nicely. How did our drivers develop over the last month? Let's have a look. Uh, a point in cornering and a point in adaptability for Mick. Oscar got a point in cornering, braking and adaptability. So a good month for Oscar. Three points gained. Been a while. Been quite a while actually since we've seen our driver gain three points like that. Uh, Ollie gained a point in smoothness, adaptability and accuracy as well. He is really coming along nicely. Uh, we do need to, at some point, work on his uh, overtaking and defending, but that is a way off yet. I want to make sure his uh, overall ability is, is there first. Uh, let's have a look at Williams. So they've upgraded their weather sensor. Red Bull. Uh, whining and complaining that they are not winning everything. Good. <laughs> How you doing, Victor? Good to see you. Let's get our pit crew training done for uh, this month. So. There is my current fatigue level. Let's go with some basic training like this. car building wanting to focus on that a bit more this month and that is perfect okay and you know what no we will continue to uh do this yeah And we'll put another day of training in there. That bring this uh, fatigue down again. And then we've got Silverstone after Austria. There we go. So that'll be our gains for the month there. Not bad, not bad at all. What did I make of the Alonso penalty? Um, uh, I think it was probably the right thing. Um, it was a very unorthodox movement that completely went against what he'd been doing throughout the rest of the race. It made sense that, you know, it would have completely caught George unaware and whether the intent was to cause the incident or not uh, from Alonso and obviously he's, he's vehemently uh, come out and stated that you know it was not his intention to cause a crash it was simply just trying to maximise his, in his uh, effort there was um, some degree of um, sneakiness about the way he went about the move he also did kind of contradict himself a little bit between some of his original statements and then his uh, uh, other comments that he made later as well. And, 
yeah, I mean, it, there's no there's no doubt that the actions that Alonso took by braking so much earlier and downshifting and uh, and then suddenly accelerating away again completely threw George off um, and ended up indi- inadvertently and indirectly causing the incident. Um, a little dangerous. So yeah, I can understand why he got the penalty. How you doing, Anthony? Right, uh, still wait for a weather report. Let's uh, continue to advance time then. That should be our new underfloor for this car now. There it is. Uh, we've got drive attention. Let's intervene and hope things improve. Now we've got a weather report. Let's have a look. And of course, it's going to be a slightly wet race. Uh, medium rain. So we might get rain all the way through. We might get a period of rain uh, and a period of dry. We'll just have to wait and see on the day. ERS in poor condition. We know about that. We are swapping them out after this, uh, you know, for this Grand Prix. Oh, no, there's absolutely no doubt that he was trying to uh, make sure that George didn't get an overtake chance on him. Uh, we've seen that from a lot of drivers um, over the years. It's not a new thing, but um, the way he went about it was very extreme. And so, yeah. Right. It is race day. So let's just double check. Our cars are running the same spec. Same chassis, same front wing, same rear wing, underfloor, side pods, suspensions. Yes, they are. Right. How good is the car tonight? Very good. Very good indeed. I am liking that. So we have improved our dirty air performance a little bit. Uh, high speed starting to just lag a little bit behind our lower medium, but it's still very strong. I do like that. That, that is very nice to see. Uh, let's take a direct comparison against Red Bull, our closest rival. We have got a 0.7 kilometer an hour speed difference, which is quite a lot. Uh, their acceleration has definitely improved. They are much closer in acceleration terms now compared to where they were a couple of races ago. The RS still lagging behind us a bit by about 9%. Uh, quite close in the low speed uh, and the medium speed. Not too far away in the high speed. They've got a slight edge in the dirty air. We've got much better brakes than them, which is nice. Uh, engine cooling's good. We've definitely got better brakes than Max, and his brake exploded on Sunday. That was uh, kind of nice to see. A, re a Red Bull retirement for the first time in two years. Coincidentally, two years to the race. That's where they last retired was, was Melbourne two years ago. Oh, and incidentally targets. Ah. Formula One has arrived here in Nuts. Quebec, and we're excited to get underway. On a man-made island in the heart of Montreal is Canada's Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. This unique track circles the outline of the Ile Notre Dame, giving plenty of challenges to our drivers between the tight corners and a long final straight. With a flat-out section of over a kilometre in Sector 3, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve is a track that asks, who dares brake last? And that means it's tough on tyres and brake temperatures the whole way round. It's Alpha Tauri at the top of the constructor standings, but there are a lot of contenders and plenty of races still to go. What will happen this weekend? Only time will tell. Ah, 
Not sorry, just had to reboot my headset because there was a weird crackling noise in my ear for a second then. Not quite sure what was causing that. Uh, so. We have no objectives for this weekend because <laughs> I kind of forgot to set them. That's, a, that's on me. That's a whoopsie. We're going to put Ollie in the car tonight. Let's uh, go with soft tyres for Ollie. Uh, Montreal is 21 laps for a run. Let's swap over those engine parts. Uh, we'll stick with the hard tyres for Oscar. Swap over his parts. And again, 21 laps. And let's start with some setups for Oscar. So, let's take a look at the book. Uh, I've got two setups that are 11 fives. The rest are all 12s on the rear wing. So, let's go with an 11 five. So, 4 five, 11 five, a 1 9, a uh, 3.15, and a 1. For Ollie, let's go with a 12. Let's go a 3, a 12, a 3.7, a 3.05, and a 0.45. And let's set them out. What a performance this weekend from Carlos Sainz. You know, <laughs> it was just two weeks ago he was having uh, surgery for, uh, you know, uh, an appendix removal. And uh, and then this weekend he is absolutely flinging that car around. If that was him at not quite 100%, oh, he's going to be a tasty, uh, a tasty prospect this season. And it does make you wonder if Ferrari have made the right decision by getting rid of him is this uh, is this science as a general driver or is this just a, a, an extremely highly motivated version of science uh, basically sticking two fingers up at Ferrari saying you know this is you know this is how good I can be you know you should have kept me uh, and also uh, an advert to other teams saying this is how good I am come and get me um, yeah he's been he's been very strong this season you know to so far you know he had some some mighty movement in Bahrain obviously he was out of Jeddah but again tonight uh, sorry this weekend he looked mighty and I yeah, I'm curious to see whether this is going to be sustained throughout the season. Oh, can you imagine if he wins? The, <laughs> it's, it's highly unlikely, but can you imagine if he wins the world title this season? And then uh, and then departs Ferrari and goes somewhere else. That would be crazy. Uh, where do I think he's going to go? I kind of think it depends on what's going to happen with Red Bull and the ongoing Christian Horner, Max Verstappen, Helmut Marco power struggle thing that's going on right now. Uh, I think if Max leaves the team, which is unlikely, but I think it's definitely a possibility if Max leaves the team, then I think he'll probably end up at Mercedes. And I think Red Bull will immediately swoop for, for sites. I mean, they've worked with science before. Well, kind of. I mean, 
he was partnered with Max when they were at uh, Toro Rosso together. They both debuted at the same time. But, yeah, I think that's the only way he goes to Red Bull. Um, I, well, maybe, maybe they drop Perez and they, they reunite Max and Sainz. That would be mighty, but I, I think Sainz wants to go somewhere where he's going to be given at least equal treatment, if not number one treatment, because he has had to play second fiddle to Charles on a number of occasions. And I think he would like to have that equal treatment slash number one treatment. And he's not going to get that if he partners up with Max at Red Bull. So, I don't know, maybe Mercedes, obviously he's been touted you know, he's been touted for about a year now as a potential driver for Audi. Copy. I don't know. I don't know where else he goes. No, uh, I think it's okay. Copy. All right, ninety-five percent for Ollie. That's pretty good. Let's get those changes made. Uh, a lot of work needed for Oscar. Aston's a possibility. Yeah, possibly. Um, again, I, that might depend on what happens with Alonso. Uh, I mean, Aston need to get rid of Stroll. If they are serious about wanting to become a top team, they need to get rid of Stroll. And a partnership of Sainz and uh, Alonso would be pretty tasty. But, you know... Will Daddy Warbucks get rid of his son? That is the question. All right, let's give that a go. Alonso are getting Honda engines you reckon they'll be strong well don't forget engine regulations are changing there's no guarantee that Honda are going to get it right I mean the last may not counting the current reg changes the last major regulation changes were engine changes and Mercedes blew everyone out of the water there's no reason to think that they might not be able to do the same uh, this time around as well. What do I go with here? Let's try 4, 12, 2, 8. 3.15 and a 0.85. Yeah, we'll give that a try. Yeah, I've always felt in this game, up until recently, I always felt in this game that Sainz was a little overrated in, in terms of his stats. That he wasn't quite as good as the game made him out to be. But after seeing him this year, I think, I think maybe they actually got it right. You know, he is that quick. He is that consistent. And we've seen glimpses of it. Well, I, I suppose that's not fair to say glimpses. We've seen it on a, a semi-regular basis over the last few seasons, but we haven't seen him just consistently smashing it. But, you know, um, last season, he was more of a, a threat to Charles in terms of pace. And this season, he's just been electric so far. And I can't wait to see the rest of his season, see how he goes, if he can sustain this uh, increase in pace that we've seen from him this uh, improvement in results really uh, really hopeful for him that he can have uh, a standout year Right. What 
What have I missed? What's going on? Away for two seconds. There we go. Well, some gearbox issues, that's fine. We're running practice gearboxes right now. So we have got a 100% setup with Ollie. Excellent stuff. Let's call that car in. Done. Oh, red flag. Red flag. Oh no. Is it one of? No, it's not us. It's it's a for it's a Red Bull. It's Max. I don't know what Max did. We didn't see it. Whether he bounced off a wall and then smashed his car up, but that was Max. That makes things interesting. Could be some serious powertrain damage. All right, we almost got full feedback. It's not quite there. Uh, let's pull that to there. Pull that back there. No idea on this. Gonna go. I'm gonna leave it like that, I think. And let's see if that little tweak is enough on the front wing angle. It might have to go the other way, but we'll try that. We want to go. Let's see. We only got 31%. We should have had about 40 odd percent. So we want to go 35 laps this time. Normally do 30. Medium tires, Mick. We want him running for about 45 laps. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's send him out. have to have a look at uh, Max's car versus Charles car and see what the difference is in powertrain components because that looked quite a big shunt I mean it brought out a red flag so that's definitely uh, done some damage evening Derek Let's have a look. Yes, Max is out. And oh, his gearbox is taking a whack. So is his engine and his ERS. That was a brand new ERS for Leclerc tonight. I'm guessing it was a brand new ERS for Max as well. And that gearbox is almost uh, <laughs> ruined already. The engine took a, a little bit of a hit as well, about 10%.
one thing about the cost cap is clear. Once one team is far ahead, it's hard for the rest to catch up. No. No. I, I disagree with that. I mean, um, if anything, it's easier for teams to catch up. I remember the old days when there was unlimited spending, when when uh, McLaren in the 80s, in the Marlborough days, were mighty and super dominant. They were bringing engines for every single practice session, a qualifying engine and a race engine. Yeah, they were just spending so much. And there was a reason they were so quick, because no one else could compete. Um, the cost cap makes it easier for teams to to catch up assuming that they have um, the facilities in place to enable them to catch up one of the reasons why Williams are so far off at the moment is because their facilities are 20 years out of date you know their whole processes need a major overhaul which is why they've gone through a lot of pain this winter um, teams will inevitably you know, sometimes take a wrong turn in, in car development, which is what we've seen with Mercedes. Uh, we saw it briefly with Ferrari, uh, but they're back again this year. They're quick. When you have a change in regulations, there's always going to be one team that nails the regulations better than everybody else. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the top team. Uh, we look at what Braun did in 2009. You know, they got those regulation changes bang on you know and uh, they were mighty fast now this is before the cost cap and you saw how quickly Red Bull closed up because they had the money to spend you know they weren't fe uh, restricted on what they could spend their money on so they caught up very very quickly uh, also they had the talent you know, so uh, that also will have helped a little bit in the current era you know, you know, there's always going to be uh, one team that goes out in front with a brand new set of regulations, but the law of diminishing returns means that at some point they will get less and less and less out of each upgrade than their rivals are getting. The rivals will get more out of than their opponents, you know, than, than the leaders in their upgrades because they are coming from further back because... They haven't got the concept quite right, but they're refining it, they're tuning it, and they're catching up, and they're catching up, and they're catching up. And then, usually, by the time everyone's kind of just about caught up a little bit, there's a regulation change, and the whole thing starts all over again. So, yeah. It, I don't think the cost cap makes things worse. I think the cost cap does make things better. I mean, all the teams are profitable these days. <laughs> that was not the case. You look at how many teams in the 80s and 90s turned up and went and went away in a very short space of time because they just couldn't compete because they didn't have the finances. You know, a lot of the teams that turned up couldn't qualify because they were too slow. They couldn't even set a, a quick enough time to pre-qualify. Ninety-four percent. A little bit more work still needed with Oscar. We shall get there, though. You think the cost cap should be doubled at least? No. I again, I think it would. The whole point of the cost cap is to is to stop favouring the teams with the biggest pockets. Ferrari used to have an insane budget. I mean, they never really managed to do a thing with it, but yeah, you know, the amount of money that Ferrari would spend was insane. Um, and it worked for them in the 2000s, in the early 2000s. They were unstoppable. Um, McLaren were mighty for periods at a time. Williams were mighty in the 90s for a period of time. You know, they were strong all the way through the 90s. 91, they were close. 92, they absolutely dominated. 93, they dominated. 94, they weren't quite there because they'd lost active suspension then. Um, 95, again, they were there and thereabouts, but not quite quick enough. Those were the two years that uh, Benetton won the title with Schumacher.
Uh, but 96, they won the title. 97, they won the title. They were kind of uh, falling away a little bit in 98. Uh, and then it kind of went downhill from there. But, you know, Williams enjoyed a very dominant period. You know, you're always going to get teams that, you know, like I said, are a step ahead of the field. And then regulations will change or something will get outlawed. And uh, it will have a bigger impact on one team than another. And, uh, and the whole process will, will change and start again. And there are provisions in the cost cap for teams lower down to spend a bit more cash. Um, to help help them catch okay, up. Okay. okay, mate, we'll let you know. Inevitably, the top teams will be the teams that have the best talent, you know, behind the scenes, not just in the cockpit, which will enable them to get the most out of their upgrades and their design um, and research periods. And the teams with, with no disrespect intended, the teams with the lesser talent might go down blind avenues uh, you know, go down some dead end areas and waste money in areas that then they can't obviously then spend that money again in the right area. And that can that can be another reason why top teams always have that little edge. And let's not forget uh, Williams, not Williams, sorry, uh, Lotus, uh, Lotus Renault uh, a few years back in their double tusk days. <laughs> oh, that really weird aero design that they had. Uh, put uh, side-blown exhausts on their car, um, feeling that uh, it would give them a huge benefit and that they could really chase uh, a lot of future performance that way. Turns out they nailed it pretty much out of the gate and there wasn't anywhere left for that concept to go. Uh, and so, you know, they had a, a period where they had an advantage and that advantage disappeared almost immediately because once the other team started doing similar things because there was no real further scope for development in that, you know, you know, in that period. They'd reached a point where they couldn't really make it any better than it already was. What do we still need to do? We've made some changes to Ollie, hopefully, uh, to Oscar, sorry. Hopefully those changes will be effective this time. Uh, I need to run for, let's say, maybe 32 laps. And I'm going to run him on the softs. Actually, no, I'm going to run him on the mediums. I'm going to keep one set of mediums available. Uh, which means we'll go with mediums for Mick. Mick's going to have... I'm going to try something a little different tonight with Oscar. Uh, we've already gone softs in, uh, in Mick's car uh, in the first session with Ollie, so we can't do the same. But I'm going to try something a little different. We're going to keep um, an extra set of softs available, which maybe will help in qualifying. Um, we're going to have a wet race, so theoretically, uh, it, the only dry compound that we'll need to run, if at all, will be soft tyres. So we'll see if that works. It might not work. This is a gamble. <laughs> it may not pay off, but we shall uh, keep our fingers crossed on that one. A bit less. 
Let's curb. Yeah, I'd love to see Williams successful again as well, Anthony. Uh, whether James Viles is the right man for that job remains to be seen. He's certainly coming from a team, um, his previous team of Mercedes, that had uh, much better processes in place than what was still in place at Williams, you know, because we know that Williams was massively behind and out of date in the way that they were doing things and building things. Uh, so he has got that knowledge of how uh, a, a team to be successful in the modern era needs to run. He's got that knowledge and that experience, so he can bring that across. Uh, let's see how that plays out. Next season is going to be the important season because they went through this whole struggle through the winter, knowing that it would hurt them uh, and trying to get all of that pain out of the way in one go rather than drip feeding it for you know year after year after year and never being in a position to take that, that step forward that they needed to do. It's going to obviously affect them this season. It already has affected them. They were late to, to um, pre-season testing. They didn't have enough chassis to be able to give Logan Sargent a car this weekend for more than uh, a practice session before they gave it to, uh, um, to Alex. Um, hopefully they will improve as the season goes on but next season I think is going to be the real test if they can get through pre-season and bring out a car that is good uh, and take that step forward that you know they need to take then you know it will vindicate everything that they've done but if they fall apart next year might be it for Vowles. The Rothmans livery was cool. Yes, I did quite like the Rothmans livery. I preferred the camel livery from the previous years. You know, the, uh, the yellow, white and blue that they had from the early 90s. Well, the late 80s to the early 90s. Um, that Canon camel livery, that was nice. And there we go. We have nailed the setup now with Oscar. Excellent stuff. Yeah, the, the Rothmans livery was nice. The Winfield livery that came after that was horrendous. Just did not look right seeing a Williams that was red. I understand how cars, you know, liveries will change based around their sponsors, but one thing I will give Red Bull props for is that their car has always had um, an identity that hasn't changed, you know, uh, or has, has barely changed. I think in the early days they did have um, a slightly different variation of it, but the, the overall... Um, identity of the car hasn't really changed over the years despite their changing of sponsors you know up and down seasons uh, yes we can let Oscar box that's fine I wish more teams would have their own identity that you know stayed like that and then the sponsors come and go but the identity stays the same Ferrari obviously have stayed the same they're you know, their style of, of, of the red has changed a little bit over the years. You know, they've gone with different shades, different, uh, um, you know, accent colors and stuff like that. But the basic identity of the Ferraris always looked like a Ferrari. You know, um, it would be nice if, if t more teams did that. Aston, obviously, as Aston are now, you know, in their British racing green. And... I would imagine that they will continue to race in British Racing Green with just sponsors on the side. But you see the teams that are smaller or perhaps more in need of money, like Williams were for a while, 
they I mean I did really like the Martini Williams that was a cool livery um, but you know the Rocket Williams <laughs> not a good car and not a great livery either to be honest um, but it, it was the entire identity of the car was wrapped up in the sponsor not the team and I had kind of wished that you know, teams would have more of an individual identity that remained the permanent fixture and deliveries incorporated elements of sponsorship but stayed truer to the team itself. And I think we're starting to see more of a switch to that. And then, you know, you go the complete opposite direction with teams like Salva, who uh, get a, a naming rights deal with Alfa Romeo and completely change their identity. Uh, and now... Alfa Romeo have gone away and Hick and Stake are the leading teams. And now we have these, you know, awful looking Saubers this year that again have no, no core identity at all other than that of their sponsor. Right, we are done with practice. We're ready for quali. Our drivers are pretty confident in the car. You can see car park knowledge not quite at 100% given the new underfloors, but 98% starting confidence should be a good race for a sign. We will have new ERS units in the car as well, which will also help improve our pace a little bit from uh, Barcelona. Let's see how we do. Welcome to the much-anticipated qualifying session. The circuit Gilles Villeneuve isn't a permanent track, so circuit evolution is high over the Grand Prix weekend. Overtaking is possible, but getting a well-timed lap in qualifying will help any driver. Now, there's been a bit of talk lately about Oscar Piastri. Karun, how's he been doing? I'd say they'll be feeling all right. If you were to compare them with their teammate, they're coming out on top and they're showing their worth. You're going to want to join us for this, folks, so fasten your seatbelts. I'm not a big fan of the green and black then. Well, it's not... Well, no, I don't like the livery, but it's not so much that it's more a case of, you know, that's not... You know, Salva don't look like a salva they look like a walking billboard for a gambling company and i yeah i mean there have been some really classic co liveries that were basically walking liveries for cigarette companies the john player special lotus for example the marlboro mclaren you know um the west mclaren um the rothmans williams the bars when they first turned up um, with their Lucky Strike logo. Um, but, yeah. Those identities stayed quite consistent for a period of time, for a long period of time. Uh, and, you know, I just, I don't like teams that just sell their soul just for a little bit of extra cash. You know, like I said, just have a little bit more team identity you know rather than just you know uh, we don't care what we look like as long as we get paid right second ERS unit going in the car tonight give us that little bit of a boost in acceleration Are ready to qualify. Two. Should be great. Stop. 
start to work on your fronts and your brakes. Copy. Concentrate on the uh, tyre warm-up as best we can. OK, copy. So, how much of an improvement can we expect from our new underfloor? So we should be good on traffic. It'll be go one last moment. Clear track ahead. Good to push next lap. I'm hoping we can be a little bit more comfortable with our pace this weekend. The slight increase in downforce will certainly help as well when the wet weather hits in the race. And we will definitely be slipstream qualifying in Q3. You can see how much Mick has been closing up on this lap. And you'll see him get really close to the back of Oscar down this straight. There we go. Six and a half tenths of a second. That's a mighty slipstream. Just in case we need to send them out again, but I'm hopeful we won't need to. We were over a second faster. Almost a second faster than uh, Ocon behind us there. Uh, who else is on a flyer? Giovinazzi, let's see what Giovinazzi can do. And he's quicker than Ocon. And he's only a tenth slower than Oscar. Good lap for Giovinazzi. Maybe we might need to run them again, just to make sure Oscar's safe. Pires do hold up pretty well here, so uh, running another lap isn't going to be an issue. Let's uh, turn them out and uh, send them out again. Charles Leclerc is now leaving the garage. We will definitely be watching him. that stroll in front it is and see what time stroll posts i forgot to see what the ferraris were looking like they were pacey in the last race see what they can do tonight and max is now coming out as well be very interesting to see the difference in pace between Max and Charles. 
given that Max destroyed his ERS unit. Sorry, his gearbox. Damaged his engine in ERS. You would expect Max to now be slower than Charles until they uh, until he puts a new engine in. And here is Charles winding up. You might just see us pop in the background. That is a McLaren, not us. That's Norris, who's just in front of us on track. Let's take advantage of this clean air. Good to push my club. You're clear. Go one. Is Oscar close enough? Ooh, just about. Could do with being just a touch closer, but you should still get some benefit. Go back to Charles Leclerc. No improvement for Mick, but Oscar's improving. Not close enough for the full slipstream yet, that's why he didn't go purple. Stroll dives out of the way. Stroll is 1.8 seconds slower than Mick. If we take Mick's time out and go by Schumacher, by Piastri's time, he's still 1.2 seconds slower than Piastri. Again, no improvement for Mick. Oscar improving again. Leclerc goes second. Four tenths behind. Norris coming up to the line. And slower than Ocon. And Oscar goes purple in the final sector after Mick went purple in the final sector and it's now much much closer and that is it for us this session let's have a look at Max Max is eight tenths away he's half a second slower than his teammate got a Ferrari on track about to start at flying lap Russell's still in the garage. Still no sign of Russell. Uh, uh, wait for two seconds and switch off. Must have been an issue for Maloney. 4.6 seconds off the pace. That is uh, definitely a lap where he got held up in some way, be it mistake or just another car getting in, in front of him. So uh, he will definitely improve, but how much will he improve by? Poor Cher is two and a half seconds slower, as is Hajar. Did they get held up? They are very slow, if not. Perez is slow. I thought there'd be a little bit more pace in the car than that. i wait to see what Russell does. He's still in the pits. Oh, and here he comes. Finally. There goes for short. Sure. 
Bottas goes quicker than the McLarens. Ooh. That's a bit of a surprise. But I say McLaren have really struggled in recent uh, recent races. Uh, let's actually quickly take a look. Yeah, McLaren's still running old engines. Look, that's why they're so slow. And Bottas. Who else was really slow? Hajar. It must have been held up. Porsche. New engine. Old ERS, but should be quicker than he is. Gasly yet to set a time as well. Yeah, that's a, that's not at all surprising. Looking at those stats to see why Giovinazzi was so quick. An old ERS Perez. We don't know about Russell. He's just starting his flying lap now. Albon, Gasly, Joe and Russell. The only drivers yet to set a time. Albon could be quick. Gasly could be quick. We haven't seen what his car looks like yet. Uh, we don't know about Joe's either, but he won't be amazingly quick. That Mercedes is just really not a good car this year. The Alpine's not too bad. You can see Sainz up in fourth place. Just behind Leclerc. What can Russell extract? As Albon goes uh, to P7. Half a tenth slower than Max. Joe goes a couple of tenths quicker than Bottas. Oh, this could be bad for George. That's a lift. Uh, so a compromised ending to Russell's lap. And that sees him slower than Perez. But uh, that cost him more than the two tenths that he lost, I think. But let's speed up for the final run. Russell is the driver we're going to keep an eye on. He is the biggest casualty at risk here. Perez only just coming out of the pits now. He's only just going to have time to cross the line. And that's assuming he doesn't get pulled over a lot. The car's coming through. If he does, then he's in real trouble. So Russell needs to find a good lap here. Through the first sector without any issues. I'm not sure Paris is going to make it, you know. It's going to be so tight. He's not going to make it. <clears throat> Paris is not going to cross the line in time. That's it. Check the flag is out. Is that going to put Perez in trouble? Norris has improved up to 15th. It's not enough. Because Russell's going to improve. Goes 10th. And now Perez is in the drop zone. Luckily for him, everyone else is on an in-lap now behind him. So Perez just sneaks through. But that was uh, a little bit uh, risky from Ferrari there.
So at the end of the first session, we are going to say goodbye to both McLarens, Norris and Ocon, as well as Bottas in the Mercedes and both the Haas cars of Porsche and Maloney. Not looking good for Haas tonight. And Q2, go with the scrub tyres again. And Leclerc's coming out early in the session as well. So we'll have a direct comparison against the Red Bull right out the gate. Hajar looking to get a slipstream from the back of Leclerc. We'll keep an eye on that, see if he gets it. Gasly's coming out as well. Potentially going to have our lap spoiled by Gasly here. Depends where we catch him. We catch him on the run to the final chicane. That's bad. But actually, no, it's not too bad because he's on an he's on an out lap. If he was on an in lap, it would be disastrous. He might actually be a benefit if we can catch him in just the right place. Mick might get a little bit of a slipstream as well. We're not going to catch him. Okay, I, I'm a little surprised by that. So, a 110.4 and a 110.1. Let's follow the delta. So, it'll be normal uh, in lap procedures, please. Delta state negative. Cool the car on the way in. Yeah. It's a jar close enough to get a tow. Might get a little bit of a boost, but it's not close enough to get a full tow. Tent slower than Mick. It's not a bad time for Hajar, so he definitely got the benefit of a tow. Just two tents behind Leclerc. That might be enough to keep him in the session. Gasly. He's quicker than Gasly. got uh, George coming out early and Perez both coming out this lap uh, Albon's coming out as well and that might be good enough for us to not need to run again 
We'll prep the cars though, just in case. Just a reminder as well, if you want to get some more info on F1 Manager 24, don't forget to tune in to the Frontier Unlocked live stream this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the UK. So that'll be 1 p.m. Eastern or uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. And then obviously adjust based on your own time zone. Uh, they will be going through the creator team mode in more detail. Don't know if they're going to show anything else, though. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, yeah, that will be live on Twitch and YouTube uh, at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, this Wednesday. And if you do miss it, obviously you will have the chance to watch the replay on YouTube. I'm assuming you can do replay watching on Twitch. I don't know. I haven't been on Twitch for so long. All right. Got uh, George coming up to the line. And George is slow compared to Gasly. Two tenths slower. Sainz is leaving the pits. Albon crosses the line and goes just a fraction slower than Gasly. Quicker than, Rus than Russell. What about Perez? Perez slower than George by two tenths. But it's not looking good for Ferrari tonight. Thought they'd be a little bit quicker than they are. Max now starting his flying lap. Let's see what he can do. As Hajar starts to go again for his second run. A little bit of traffic for Max in the opening sector there. that Williams and Ferrari move out of the way slightly compromising Max there definitely compromised in there so this won't be a great lap from uh, from Max he will need to go again to improve but it should be good enough to get him uh, ahead of the Ferraris I think maybe or at least around the Ferraris. Yeah, in between them. So, uh, we know that uh, Sainz is on a lap now. Let's uh, keep an eye on Sainz. He's shown some pace in the first session. Gasly uh, getting ready to do another run. Joe pops up between uh, the two Ferraris as well. So Perez is at risk of getting knocked out in this session because we know the Williams is relatively quick here. Sainz is going to get a nice little toe across the line here from Stroll. That's Gasly. Tell a light. The science goes P5. 
That uh, slippery run for Hajar has really helped him out. Look at the difference between him and his teammate. Magnuson, only P13. Here comes Giovinazzi, P5. Stroll P3 with a slipstream from the back of Giovinazzi there. Good lap for Stroll, so he's through. And Perez now in the drop zone, and so is Max. So we're going to advance time and keep an eye on Max. There he is. And again, he's going out late. If he gets pulled over, he'll let a quicker car through. Which is a possibility. He might not make it. We saw that happen to Perez in, uh, in Q1. Perez did not make the cut. Or did not cross the line in time to start that flying lap. There is a, an, an Alpine coming up quickly. I'm not sure which one it is. Is that there? Is that the move that knocks out Max Verstappen? Why has he left it so late? We've seen some very odd decisions from the AI timing wise this season well not just this season but last as well uh i mean barcelona charles leclerc just ruining his race by staying out on those uh hard tires until they just exploded stroll not doing himself any favors in that race either with a similar strategy will max make the line it's going to be so tight. I don't think he's going to make it. He's not. Max is out. Max is out. Right. Russell, Perez, both on flying laps. Can the Ferraris squeeze themselves into the top 10? Russell improves his time, but not his position. He is out as well. So you've got to imagine that that's it for Joe and Perez as well. Joe crosses the line, does not improve. Can Perez find anything? Can Magnussen find anything? Magnussen's getting a toe. This is going to knock out Albon, potentially. Magnussen's through. What about Perez? Perez is out as well. I mean, I couldn't see him finding four over four tenths of a second. But he is ahead of Max. So Max is 14th. Oh, that's glorious. Max Verstappen down in 14th place. All right, then. Final qualifying. Leclerc coming out straight away as well. He's going to be our biggest threat tonight. Okay, let's concentrate on that warm up. So start to work on the front tires and brakes this lap. We're going to do Copy. one lap on these tires, two laps on a set of brand new tires towards the end of the session. We'll try and flip them round on the cool down lap.
clear track ahead. So let's go recharge off and push next lap. Clear ahead. Go, 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 go. Is Magnussen going to compromise Leclerc? No. As we come up to the line, mixed opening lap is a 110.4 and a 199 for Oscar. Very nice. Let's uh, call down a box, please. Delta stay negative. Cool the engine. Copy. And Leclerc is uh, six tenths slower. A little bit of a disaster for Magnuson there, getting compromised by us boxing, which slowed up uh, the Aston, which then slowed up him. He will need to. Oh, whoops. He will need to uh, definitely improve on his next run. So for sure is starting a flying lap. He's going to potentially disrupt our uh, preparation a little bit. Not a great lap. From, not a great lap from Stroll. But then he was compromised by us boxing. That's a decent lap from uh, Hajar.
it's so weird seeing a top 10 with no McLaren, no Ferrari, no Mercedes, and then only one Red Bull. So, nobody ahead of you. That's so weird. To go. Okay, buddy, let's take advantage. Just clear out in front. Let's go. We recharge off before the last corner. So this should be a pretty mighty lap for Schumacher, assuming that we don't get held up by Hajar. Perfectly positioned for a uh, a monster slipstream off the back of Oscar here. And then we'll try and reverse the order at the end of this lap. Give Oscar a run in the slipstream on the new tyres. I've gone early because I want to try and get the laps in, in clean air without cars getting in the way. Whether or not that's going to work <laughs> remains to be seen. No improvement from either driver so far. This is unexpected. Maybe the weight of the fuel is a bit of an issue. And I don't think Schumacher's going to get an improvement here, so we'll have to leave them where they are. Schumacher's time is not guaranteed. So we'll have to leave him behind. Which means he'll probably take pole position from Oscar. But that's okay. As long as we get the pole position, doesn't matter which one of our drivers gets it. And Oscar may actually possibly get a little bit of a slipstream from Leclerc here. If we're lucky. which will benefit, you know, uh, both of our drivers. And Nick is definitely closer this lap, so we'll get a much more powerful slipstream. Expect to see some purple sectors from Mick. Uh, we have got a Williams coming out of the pits. That's Magnussen. Is he going to get revenge on us for compromising his first run? No improvement from Oscar again, but Mick goes purple. This is going to be a monster lap from Schumacher. Again, no improvement from Oscar. Evening Clark, evening Cloud, good to see you guys. Driving for the line. Leclerc goes P2. And then Mick absolutely nails pole position. And we need to cool the PU on this So that is it for us. And I think that's it for this session. I don't think anyone is going to take a front row spot from us. But it's Leclerc. Guaranteed third. Four cars, five cars out on outlaps right now. Two on flying laps. Stroll improves his time, but not his position. So uh, Stroll will finish in ninth place.
Mick moving out of the way early there for Magnussen. Now Oscar pulls over and lets him through. Oh, he's going to get compromised again, this time from Leclerc. Terrible luck for Kevin Magnussen. Can he improve his time? No, is the answer. All right, Hajar, Sainz, Vashore, Gasly, Giovinazzi, all on flying laps. Stroll is on an in lap. This could be a very good lap for Giovinazzi here in the Williams. He's getting a slipstream beautifully from the back of the Alfa Romeo here. What happened to Max? Um, compromised slightly on his first run in Q2 and then uh, didn't cross the line in time to set uh, a second flying lap at the end of the session, so went out in P14. Giovinazzi goes third. That slipstream working beautifully. Hajar coming up to the line. Doesn't improve, but there is your top 10. It's Schumacher from Piastri, then Giovinazzi in third from Leclerc. Bashore in fifth, then Sainz, Gasly, Hajar, Stroll, and Magnussen. And it's a top 10 with no Mercedes, no McLaren, no Ferrari, no Max Verstappen. The teams are making their final preparations down in the pit lane ahead of today's race. Named after the legendary Canadian driver, the circuit Gilles Villeneuve has been host to plenty of first-time winners. Jean Alesi, Lewis Hamilton, Robert Kubica and Daniel Ricciardo all got their maiden victories here. Karun, what are your thoughts on Mick Schumacher and his chances for the race? I think it's really great to see them performing at this level, well above what we'd expected. They must be feeling good. And each team will be hoping that fortune is on their side. So bon chance to them and their drivers for this Canadian Grand Prix. So we know we've got some rain. How much rain and when's it going to fall? It looks like we're starting on dries. And there we go. So it's going to be into weather the uh the whole way through we're not going to need to change to uh to full wets we'll look to box somewhere around like 22 i think initially and then enters for the rest of the race And we can push those tyres all the way if we need to, which we won't do. But we will have that option. Okay, so uh, softs to enters around lap 22. And I'm just going to put one extra lap of fuel in just for the opening 10 laps or so. If I can break away at the start. That would be glorious. Anthony says, I've got this race in the bag. Well, <laughs> don't jinx me, for God's sake. Uh, safety cars do happen at this circuit. There's going to be rain as well. There's going to be some pit lane shenanigans, no doubt. Let's see what happens. 70 laps of the Canadian Grand Prix await our drivers here in Montreal. Mick Schumacher. A composed figure approaching this one. They've got a fantastic opportunity starting on pole, but can they carry it through to the end? So let's see what today has in store, shall we? This is it. We're moments away now at the Canadian Grand Prix. 
and it's lights out, and away we go. We are off and running. I'm expecting Leclerc to jump Giovinazzi quite quickly off the line here, but Giovinazzi's actually looking to try and jump Oscar. We've got the inside line. And there we go, we are through. So, just the first few laps, no fighting. We want to break the gap as quickly and efficiently as we can. But after that, I will let them race. Max has dropped a place. He's down in 15th right now. He got jumped by Joe. I think. pushing on this lap as well Charles Leclerc is our biggest threat in this race and he is currently uh, tucked up behind Germanazzi is everyone on softs everyone's on softs focus on the energy now yeah we can just focus on charging the pack i'm gonna keep the tires pushed for one more lap drs enabled can't be sat p1 and we're just keeping an eye on Charles because i am expecting to try and jump Giovinazzi although he is fighting back on us. Need to focus on getting the pack up. Coming. Here comes Leclerc. And Leclerc is through. And he got the DRS. Ah, oh, nuts. So Leclerc is coming after us hard here. Ah, oh, side by side to the World of Champions. That's never good. <laughs> Oscar gets the move done. There is uh, Charles. All right, so let's slow the pace down a little bit now. Keep looking after these tyres. Okay, this is what I'd hope to avoid, having Charles Leclerc right on our gearbox. Now I am worried that Leclerc is going to jump Oscar.
He has, and he's going to have a crack at Mick as well. Sainz has got through against Giovinazzi. Sainz is another car that is going to be a bit quick tonight, so that's not ideal. And our breakaway has not worked. Maybe I should have waited with the battery. But Leclerc's going for it right now. He has given up the DRS though. So we'll keep the pressure on him. Okay, recharge on, recharge on. Let's try and get those batteries topped up quickly, and then we'll uh, try and break away from Leclerc again who has pushed his tyres a little bit harder than us. But not by a huge amount. Okay, recharge on, recharge on. Got to make sure I don't give an opportunity here to Sainz or Leclerc to either jump us or break away from us. Bring the pack up. Coming. Yeah, given that Max is down in 14th at the moment, and uh, he's going to struggle to challenge for a podium tonight. He might get top five, top six. But given that he's going to drop a lot of points to Oscar tonight, I'm quite happy to let them race. Mick needs the points to uh, consolidate um, his position in the championship, try and uh, move up it towards second. So if Mick wins, I'll be quite happy with that. And as long as Oscar gets second. But I want the top two steps. You've got energy. Cup it. Recharge on. Copy. Trusting my drivers are not going to do something stupid, take each other out. Now. And we've got a breakaway group now. The front five pulling away from Stroll. Although Stroll has pushed back, uh, past for sure, so he might be trying to catch up onto this group. Of course, he's going to drag for sure along for the ride with him. Need a 
recharge off. So ideally, yeah, what I want to do is try and just stay behind Leclerc until the end of the uh, hairpin and then break away from him with both cars on the uh, back straight leading up to the final chicane. The plan, whether or not that works, is another matter. Mick is through. Couldn't get Oscar through as well. Should get him here though. Mm, that's not so good. All right, so we'll focus on bringing the pack back up. Continue to let Mick sprint. Try and break back. away from Charles. sure that Oscar gets this move done cleanly here. Copy. He's not getting it done. Come on, Oscar. There we go. Did not get the fastest lap. Sweet. 113.7. Oh, we just missed it by the tiniest of margins. Broke Leclerc. Science isn't close enough to get the slipstream on Leclerc either. No more lift to close required. This should be fastest lap. Here in John. And there we go, fastest lap, 113.5. So take it easy. Save fuel. Leclerc trying to break away from Giovinazzi, who's in front of Sainz. Focus on the energy. Now we need our drivers to start swapping positions and stretching that gap in the DRS zones without compromising each other through the corners. Let's get a weather update. Nine minutes till it's damp. Comfortable to push. We'll start pushing the tyres a little bit more. 
Oh yeah, we've definitely got a tire advantage over the rest of the grid. They've been pushing harder for longer. Oh, we got a yellow flag. That's a Mercedes. That's Bottas or Joe in the Wall of Champions, maybe. No, a lockup at the chicane. Right then, we can take a look now. Let's have a look at the action. It's all at the final corner. Very heavy on the brakes, and they ended up their own passenger. So that has ruined Joe's race. It's going to kill his confidence. It's dropped him off the back of the train. He might catch up to the, a couple of the slower cars, but there's a big train forming behind Porsche. Max still down in 14th place behind Russell, Albon, Perez. Hajar still in the top 10. Mick moves ahead of Oscar briefly. He's got the inside line and he'll get the DRS. Leclerc pushing again, trying to close us down. Do not want to let Charles have another sniff. Let's go and get him. And he's going to get one anyway. Damn it. I am amazed Mick managed to hold off Oscar there but I'm also a little frustrated because that's now compromising their pace which is letting Leclerc sneak back into DRS again This time, Oscar will complete the move. Didn't get DRS, but he did get the slipstream. And letting them fight is not working in terms of pulling away from Charles. So we are going to tell them to calm it down. And we're going to rebuild their batteries, ready for the inevitable pit stop that is coming.
four minutes. All right, let's keep closing up. Great job. And we've definitely broken away from that uh, second group now of Giovinazzi and Sainz. They've pulled away from Stroll and Vashor. Russell still ahead of Max. Ajar has now slipped out of the points, down to 12th. Still all to play for for him though. And judging when to stop is going to be critical if we want to try and stay ahead of Leclerc with both cars here. Joe's now nine seconds off the back of Maloney and co. And we got a yellow flag briefly. Is that Joe making another mistake? No, a lockup for Perez. Now here, we're taking turn six. And the car fails to respond. And hopefully there's not too Ooh, much damage to the tyres. He does a little bit of lawn mowing there, but he keeps it going. Holds the position. Recharge on. Copy. And here comes the rain. Pack up. Copy. Uh, ready. Copy. Am I going to double stack? Um, no, I'm boxing Mick this lap. Box, 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 box. Copy for box. Tire to enter. <laughs> Tire to enter. Box. This will hurt Oscar slightly. We could just focus on charging the pack. Yeah. And energy is available. 2.2 seconds stop. That's not bad. It's going to be close to the pit Push, push. Protect 
box this lap. Yes, Stop kept the, the position. Box, box for Inter. Bring the pack up. Copy. Back off now. Copy. Okay, push. Let's go. So, critical stop here. It's a good stop for Leclerc. Can we stay ahead of him? No. We got held to let him through. Actually, Mick has come out behind Leclerc and Piastri. I did not expect that. Oscar should get DRS here. Oh no, they just switched off. We just got in range and then they switched it off at the start of the uh, straight. So, Max has moved up thanks to uh, the pit stops. He's up to 11th. So, he's close to the points now. He's still a way off, though. Recharge on. Leclerc's probably going to push his tyres a little hard. We're going to be a little bit patient. Oscar's tyre is still not up to temperature. They're getting me getting close. We're going to uh, let the fuel build up a little bit, which it will do, especially as it gets wetter, which it will do. Not massively wetter, but we'll get to like two and a half, maybe three. And at some point, we will push onto the back of Charles, get in front of him, and then just try and control the pace. Burn up Leclerc's inters a little bit. Frustrate him. And then try and break away from him. So we have to be patient for a little while now. Russell and Magnussen have pulled away a little bit from Max. Two mil of water now.
don't want to let the gap to Charles get too big. Two seconds is okay. If he gets above that, then we're in trouble. We'll have to push a little bit to catch him up. Still getting wetter. Still lapping a couple of tenths slower per lap. And there is that increase that I was a little concerned about. Let's just up the fuel burner a touch. Okay, mate. No more lift to coast needed. Right, Leclerc is pushing hard this lap, trying to break away. Gap suddenly up to three seconds. So we are going to need to respond to that. Get right behind him. It's going to be a three way fight to the win tonight. And this fight will determine the entire podium order, I think, unless someone has a mistake. Can't see anyone else having the pace to keep up with us. Or Charles, for that matter. See how much we've closed the gap this lap. need to get a little bit closer so we get the full slipstream benefit. Go get it. I do not want to overheat my tyres too much though. try and build up the battery and fuel gradually staying close to Charles who is again trying to break away from us he's just a little bit quicker in these conditions 
I really don't want to burn out my tires too early just staying with him. But I don't want to let him get away from us either. Tricky balancing act here. I think until we're in a position to actually challenge. We will be swapping cars. We need to uh, make sure that we're not compromising each other. Avoid overtake, avoid overtake. Because we are just slipping Stop. behind him again. As soon as we stop pushing our tires, he just pulls out a big chunk of time on us again. Let's work on getting the batteries topped up so that we can uh, push to close up again when we need to. And already that gap is back up to uh, nearly three seconds again. We need to get in front so that we can uh, hold him back. For whatever reason, we just never quite seem to have the pace in the wet. It's frustrating. And it's not down to a, well, it's maybe down to a, a little bit of a lack of skill, but both of our drivers have really developed their uh, adaptability ratings in the last couple of seasons. You know, they're now good in these conditions, or supposed to be good in these conditions compared to where they were. And yet... And yet... The evidence does not seem to support that. now 3.18 we did actually close the gap by a couple of tenths on that lap no lift and coast required from our side at the moment let's try and just edge back up towards him Checking with Max, down in 11th place, still outside the points. And not really looking like he's going to move forward. As I say that, George has dropped off the back of Kevin. And we've got a yellow flag. Please don't be one of mine. It is one of mine. It's a lockup from Mick. Let's keep on him. Let's have a look at that. 
Now, this was at turn one. I'm just grateful he wasn't closer and didn't go into really the back of Oscar. always going to be a tough time out on the track in these kind of conditions. Yes, it is annoying, Mick. Got you four seconds off the back of your teammate. Hurt the confidence a little bit, but at least he's still at starting level, so he's not massively compromised on pace. Oscar's confidence is uh, dropping slightly. Again, no overtaking going on, so just naturally degrades, but it's a good starting level. And we are slowly eking up onto the back of uh, Charles Leclerc again. Yeah, down to 2.3 seconds now. Tense. So Oscar is now consistently finding just little bits of time over Charles. But that's because we're pushing the fuel a little bit. My concern is that as soon as we stop doing that, we will start dropping back again. So I do want to try and get Oscar in front of Charles ASAP. Just edging closer while the battery is slowly trickling up. And then we will push him hard to get past Charles Leclerc and then try and just control the pace a little bit. Give Mick a chance to uh, close up. It's going to start easing down in terms of water on the track soon. In fact, it's starting now, as you can see. We're not going to see ERS again, sorry, DRS again for the rest of the race. So what you see is uh, what we have. And that gap is coming down. So any overtakes we do are going to have to be hard fought on track. There's not going to be any DRS. Uh, you know, passes available. Max still down in 11th outside of the points. Real chance tonight to uh, take a stranglehold on the championship. Now down to one and a half seconds. Mick closing in as well. His pace is about the same as Oscar's. And they see a slow lap from Leclerc. I wonder if he's charging his battery or if he's just not fuel pushing at the moment. He might be uh, just in a little bit of a conservation mode. Tires are about the same as Oscar's still. Mick's obviously slightly lower because he had that lock up. Just under three mil on the water now. Almost within a second.
now inside the one second. Let's go for it. See if we can get this move done. Pull out to take some air on the straight. Coming. Claire just sitting there blocking. Nearly got the lunge. Can we go around the outside into turn one? We can. That'll become the inside for turn two. And there we go. We are through. So now we need to try and hold that position. Give Mick a chance to try and catch up. Currently P1. Need to focus on getting the pack up. Yep. Charging a pack. Yep. Copy. Uh, a pit stop in hand now over everybody up to and including the shore I believe with Oscar and it's a yellow flag it's not Mick it's a lock up for someone <coughs> it was Valtteri you can see just how much water is on the track the brakes couldn't cope they were just unable to do much yeah, about and he'll it. lose a place to uh, to Norris there. Taron really struggling, sixth and seven, sixteenth and seventeenth at the moment. And this is what I was talking about about frustrating Charles Leclerc. Every time we block him like that, we get a confidence boost for a successful defence. Leclerc gets a confidence loss for a failed overtake. And hopefully it will just compound the, uh, the issue. And of course, we're burning his tyres with him being so close behind us for an extended period of time. So this is excellent defensive driving here from Oscar. He's doing exactly what I need him to. And he's building his battery up quickly in the process as well. Slowing the pace down. Mick is now inside three seconds. This will be an attempt from Charles. So we'll have to push just to stay ahead if we can. Let's lean on these tyres. Shaw gets the place back. Another yellow flag. Oh, Mick. Okay, well, Mick. 
copy that. Mick is done, I think, as far as a uh, chance of a win tonight. It's now between Charles and Oscar. Mick's looking like he's going to have to settle for third. No saving required. Copy. Charlie, look how much he's pulling away. So Charles definitely pushing. We have a little lunge. Focus on bringing the pack back up. Copy. Good job. Currently P1. So take it easy in the fast corners. Yeah. We need to focus on the energy now. Copy. So this is what is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> the main order of the day for the next 30 odd laps is Oscar just trying to uh, hold back Charles, frustrate him, try and gain a tyre advantage. And then pounce. You see his confidence now almost in peak. Which is excellent. It'd be quite a tense race for Oscar here. But it's much easier to uh, defend from the front than it is to uh, chase from the rear. Stafford is still down in 11th place. Another little defensive boost. Battery charging is coming along very nicely. Almost fully charged. Mick is slowly starting to catch up again. Charge is good. Yeah, copy. Ha <laughs> 
And once again, just holding the position beautifully. Big lift off. Copy. Confidence is starting to rebound. Almost as dry as it's going to get for the rest of the race. So this is the period of time where we can do the most damage to Charles Leclerc's tyres. Another little defensive nibble. Use energy. Now I'm just going to see if I can break away from Leclerc now. Lean on the tyres as much as you can. Yeah, copy. If we can get Mick ahead of Charles Leclerc, that would be fantastic. Especially seeing as Mick and Leclerc are locked in that fight for third in the championship. Mick's slightly ahead of him at the moment, but this might flip it back the other way. Overtake is available. Yeah, copy. No lift and coast required. So the gap is two seconds, but that's not enough. Ideally, I want the gap to be up to about four or five seconds. will then be easier for us to manage if Leclerc does pick his pace up and try and come back back after us again. Three and a half. And there we go. That should keep us comfortable for a while now. Let's have a look at how Mick is getting on. Got the gap down to about four seconds now. Not a good lap for Leclerc. I wonder if he's charging up to have a run back at us. Whatever the reason. It's allowed Mick to close that gap down nicely. We've re-established the gap to uh, Giovinazzi in fourth. Finds an Albon fifth and sixth. That's good for Alpine. Check in with Verstappen, who is still in 11th place. And look at that gaggle of cars in front. There's no way he's getting through while they're all side by side like that in front of him.
for sure doing an excellent job trying to hold on to points for Alfa Romeo here. He's kept Magnussen behind him for a long time here. And I know now that I've said that, Magnus is probably going to pounce on him immediately. Just not working for Max tonight, and that's glorious. As it stands, Oscar is going to gain 26 more points over Max. Mick isn't out of the hunt for second yet. Still 23 laps to go. can get another one two tonight that will really help us out and uh, take this uh, constructors championship by the scruff of the neck with Red Bull only getting 15 points at Spain with Leclerc finishing down in 15th 17th place get exactly where it was it might have been 17th uh, Max getting third. If we can repeat that, but the other way around tonight with Leclerc finishing third and Max out the points, that will be a big, big points gain in the constructors for two consecutive races. Give us a nice big lead. I think we're 26 points ahead in the championship going into this Grand Prix. We can get a 1 2, that's 44 points against 15. So we will gain another 29 points. Is that right? Yes. Gap holding steady at around five seconds. The gap with Mick holding at about four seconds. And Oscar's starting to close up on the back of Joe, who is still struggling. Bottas also now all the way down in 19th. So another horrendous weekend for Mercedes, 19th and 20th. They are a team in desperate need of a turnaround. Evening, Mr. Water. Should we have a look let's take a look at this battle here two alpines and stroll in his aston trying to find a way past giovanazzi it's been a good race for albon up to fifth place now
let's push, come on. He is going to start getting a little bit wetter. They head back towards that three mil weather condition. Stroll getting ready to make a move on sites here. exit from the hairpin. Perez is up to 14th, he's got past Porsche Air, but he's now 12 seconds off the back of the train in front of him. Actually, no, it's not even a train in front of him, is it? It's a jar and Gasly. And he's lapping slower than them as well. So that might be the best Perez can do tonight. He's 14th. Unless he can pick his pace up. Here is the train behind. But Shaw has got in front of Magnussen. No, no, he's still in front of Magnussen. Sorry. Still holding 8th place. Russell still holding back Verstappen. These guys have been running in this order now for quite some time. Since the pit stops, I think. Well, certainly not long after the pit stops. No saving required. Copy. Mick just a fraction quicker than Charles. Do need to get that gap down again. Let's give him a good uh, burst of pace for a half a lap or so. Not been a particularly clean race for Mick tonight. Barco Pan has been. But he's still in a very strong position despite that. Closing in on Charles Leclerc. Definitely still in the hunt for that podium spot. Lift and coast required. Let's look after these tyres. It'll take us some time to get him into a position where he can actually try and put the moves to uh, to Charles, but uh, we are eking him slowly closer and closer. I'm gonna let the fuel and the battery start to build back up again. Can't burn out the tyres too much. Because Mick does have a tyre deficit to Charles. But if we can keep him close. and do something about it. 
Leclerc looking like he's trying to pick his pace up a touch. He is bringing that gap down slightly on this lap to Oscar. At least I thought he was. <laughs> Maybe not. It's definitely uh, pulling away from Mick again now that we drop Mick's pace down again. Something has happened. For sure, and Magnussen have been caught and passed by both Russell and, Mag and Verstappen. So Max now into the points. What happened there? Sure, down two places. Magnussen down two places. And now Max is making the move on George now that he's got a bit of a clear run with no car in front to help uh, Russell so Max now into 8th damage limitation mode for Verstappen and for Red Bull has he got the pace to start closing down Stroll, Spites, Albon and Giovinazzi possibly 15 laps to go George is definitely not giving up on getting back in front of Max. No more lift and coast required. Okay. Oscar, meanwhile, is looking very comfortable. Gaps up to 6.2 seconds now. He's just lapped Joe, as you can see. Meanwhile, we're going to keep an eye on this battle. Joe is now getting a nice little toe towards the back of his teammate. And Bashaw's valiant defending has unfortunately come to an end. He has now not got the pace to stay with these two. But can he keep Magnussen behind him and secure the final point? We'll keep an eye on that as well. But right now, this is the fight that I'm interested in because this is the fight that potentially take two more points away from Max and Red Bull. In eighth place, he's on for four points. 
I'd like to see him drop down to two. Russell gets back in front of him. Mick isn't closing. And he's running out of time. I'm going to have to start pushing his tyres even harder. By keeping Joe behind Oscar, I'm also stopping him from uh, acting as a, a block between Mick and Leclerc. Keeping him away from those two so that Leclerc can't put a car between Mick and him in an awkward place. Although we are starting to leave Joe behind. So at some point, Leclerc is going to try and roll up onto the back of him. Just wish I had more battery in Mick's car. Gap is coming down, but it's not coming down by enough. Tenth on that last lap. Overtake is available. Got to go for it. Just try and get close to him. Try and get that slipstream. That'll help ease the pressure. and hopefully put Leclerc under a bit of pressure. Max has a little bit more pace than Russell. Russell's staying close because he's got that toe. If Max can break the one second, he might break away from George completely. need George to have a, a bit of a push lap to try and get in front if we can Let's go recharge. 10 laps to go and the gap now just over one and a half seconds Joe is definitely coming into play and Leclerc has closed the gap to Oscar so let's just give Oscar a little bit of a push Re-establish that gap. Try and break Leclerc's spirit a little bit. Started to dry up again. More lift and coast, please. Each zone. Copy. And Leclerc is pulling away again. Leclerc on a push now. I haven't got anything to fight with. Maybe we are going to have to settle for third with Mick after all. There is Joe. And that's Oscar just in the in the distance, or is that? I think we've caught and passed Bottas as well now. We have. So two Mercedes now between Oscar and Charles. They should jump out of the way, but hopefully they'll hold him up in an awkward position.
Russell again close to the back of Max. Just doesn't quite seem to have enough to get the move though. For sure has pulled away a little bit from Magnussen, but it's not enough to be safe. Magnussen can close that gap pretty quickly with a single lap of pushing. Have another attempt to try and close that gap down. Bring the pack up. Perfect. Just not enough straight line speed in that Ferrari. Charles is getting closer and closer to the back of Joe. But Joe's getting close to Bottas. Those two are now just seven tenths of a second apart. So those two are going to fight. That might make it trickier for Leclerc to get through. Hopefully it does. And then Mick can hopefully sleep, slip through comfortably. Save fuel. Copy. Please, a bit more in each zone. Oh, it's going to be a nervy last few laps. Have we got enough left? Have we got enough time left? Close the gap and have a lunge. down to 2.2 seconds five and a half laps to go I'm just going to have to burn mixed tyres for the rest of this race now Whatever we can, where we can. Can't use the battery. Not yet. Five laps to go. Yep. And Leclerc is closing on on Oscar again. Right, I need. I need these uh, Mercedes to hold up Charles here. Rah! Joe pulls over and lets him through. Now I need him to do the same for Mick. 
which he does. Now we're going to use what's left of the battery to try and really close in before Bottas comes into play. It's a yellow flag. It's a safety car. Crash ahead, crash ahead, crash ahead. Look, it's a crash for Giovinazzi. It was the Williams driver we see there. Uh, are we going to get a lap of... Uh, oh, that's a big crash. Yeah, I can see why that's a safety car. confidence will have taken a hit with that. And that promotes everybody behind up a place in the points. So that's more points for Max. Are we going to have any running? And safety car. Just positive. Magnussen's got a head. I oh, know, I'm looking at her jar. He's still behind for sure. For sure, he's still holding on. And it looks as though Alpha are now pretty much going to get a point. Maybe they can get two. Maybe they can get three if her jar can somehow jump Magnussen on the restart. But are we going to get a restart? Are we going to get a lap? I really hope we get a lap behind the uh, we've got lapped cars we might not we might not it's going to be three laps to go when we cross the line the field is very spread out I think this it this might be it to the end If only we hadn't lapped the Mercedes drivers. Still a big gap to the back of the train for Norris. Mercedes are definitely finishing last tonight. <laughs> Even if they get released, they're not going to catch the train before the before a potential restart. So 19th and 20th for, for Mercedes tonight. Three laps to go. The field will close up by the end of this lap. Hopefully they'll immediately release them, the uh, the back markers, and then we might get one lap of running here, if we're lucky, which gives us a chance to try and get Mick past Charles Leclerc. You're a one-two, but it's, it's going to be tricky. I'm not sure we're going to get that lap that we need. Once again, it's a Williams driver causing a late safety car. <laughs> Flashbacks to Latifi. Different circumstances though. They still haven't caught the field. Come on, Maloney, pick up the pace. All right, 
I think we are there. Right, the whole field has now caught the train, just about. Trying to release the lapped cars. Of which there are two. Come on, release them, release them. Release them. If they don't release them soon, we're not going to go racing. Come on. Oh, DRS is going to be active as well. How's the track? Oh, that makes things more complicated now. And that's it. I don't think we're going to go racing. The lap cars still haven't been released. I think this is our finishing order. Oh, what's going on? The timings are just screwing up. I thought someone was slipping down the order for a second then. That's it. That's... Uh, going to be a uh, a rolling safety car finish then so it will be first and third in the end just didn't quite have enough time left to get Mick back into a position to fight Charles threw away the chance But it's still strong, strong points tonight. 26 points for Oscar. The win and the fastest lap. It'll be 15 points for Mick. 18 points for Charles Leclerc. And Max has lucked himself into yet more points. Having started 14th, he got himself up to 11th after the pit stops when the rain fell and was frustrated and stuck there for so long and then suddenly Magnussen and Vashore were passed by both Russell and Verstappen and then Giovinazzi's retirement promoted Max another place so Max is going to get six points tonight so 24 for Red Bull overall 41 for us Still good. Could have been better. Keep your pace up. Turn the DRS off again. Safety car is going to peel into the pits. Or is it, actually? It might not because it hasn't released the other cars. So I think we will actually literally finish behind the safety car. No, no, it does peel right in at the death there. We go racing, but it's not going to count for anything. No overtaking until we cross the start finish straight. And there we go. A win for Oscar Piastri. Second for Leclerc. Third for Mick. Good race for Alpine. Fourth and fifth. Stroll in sixth. Verstappen seventh. Russell eighth. For sure ninth. Magnussen tenth. Now, wasn't it an excellent showing from Oscar Piastri? It was a truly excellent win, with everything working together for the team and driver.
A great display of team spirit there, as everyone finally gets the chance to share this moment. The man from Down Under, Oscar Piastri, heads up to our podium. There's further delight for the team as they get to see both drivers up there together. Plenty of smiles for the cameras as the drivers can let off some steam here in Montreal. And down there in the Alpha Tauri garage, Karun, what would they be making of that race, do you think? I doubt they could be much happier. A win and a podium place. What a great way to round out the weekend. And that's it for this weekend's F1 action here in Montreal. Next time, the teams will be forging ahead at full throttle through the Styrian Forest. The Austrian Grand Prix is right around the corner. So then confirmation of the final result. Another double podium for us there tonight. We look at the bottom half of the table. It's Hajar in 11th. Just couldn't quite uh, get points tonight. Gasly, disappointing race for him. Down five places to finish in 12th. Porsche and Maloney had a decent race, getting some good positions there. Helped partly because of uh, uh, Giovinazzi's retirement and Joe dropping four places. But uh, yeah, not a good race for uh, Mercedes at all tonight. Not a good race for McLaren either. They are really starting to struggle. Uh, not quite sure what's going on with them. I know they're running old powertrains. We should see them pick their pace up in the next race, but they are lapping, uh, you know, lagging behind development-wise. Take a look at the Drivers' Championship standings. Oscar stretches his lead by another 20 points over Max. He's now 48 points clear. Five wins from nine. Three wins for Max. Mick in second place. Sorry, in third place. Does lose a few points to Leclerc, who moves back ahead of George Russell there by five points. And uh, is now just 24 behind. So a little bit of pressure starting to mount there. We could have really stretched Mick even further away tonight. Unfortunately, we couldn't, but uh, he's still got a good lead. It's only 20 points behind Max. He has closed that gap by another nine tonight. Uh, Gasly, no points for him. He stays sixth and is falling behind again. Lando, after a decent start and an early podium, has really slipped off the boil. Down in seventh place again. No points for him. Albon, a good, solid outing for Alpine tonight. Moves above his teammate by two points and is now just nine behind Lando Norris. Sites in ninth. Stroll moves up to 10th with his points above Magnussen. No points for Perez or anybody else <laughs> apart from Vashore, who got two more points for, Aston, for Alfa Romeo. And uh, let's see what that sounds for the constructors. We're on 308 points. Uh, as I say, a nice 17 point gain over Red Bull tonight. Uh, 236 points. That is a gap of 72. That's a very healthy little lead that we've got now over Red Bull in the constructor standings. Gap was bigger than I thought it was. Uh, Ferrari in third, just four points for them tonight. They're 20 points clear of Aston, who are closing just a little bit. And it's a good result for Alpine. They move above McLaren and are just 15 behind Aston. And if they keep their form going like this, they will catch and pass Aston Martin and move up to four. Uh, a point for Williams tonight, sees them move up to 38 points. Two more points for Alfa Romeo, hits, sees them hit double digits. Pass with five points. Mercedes still with just the one point. What is going on with the Silver Arrows? In the pit stop challenge, we got the fastest stop with Mick, 2.2 seconds. Oscar in fourth. Uh, Red Bull second and fifth. So we outscored Red Bull in the, in the uh, pit stop challenge. We got 37 points against their 28. We re-established the gap a little bit more, back to 46 points. And we are a long way clear, both teams a long way clear of Ferrari in third on 137. 50 points clear of McLaren in fourth, who are uh, 23 clear of Alpine. Mercedes did pick up some points in the competition, uh, just like last season. They are able to score points here, but not in the races. 
Uh, they are five behind, behind Alpine and did close the gap a little bit. Aston got some more points. Still nothing, though, for Williams, Alfa, Romeo or Haas. And there are the two stops that we made. Let's take a look at our driver report cards. Four successful overtakes, two failed, eight successful defences, four failed. And my headset's just disconnected. <laughs> uh, let's see, we are on Oscar now. Eight, six successful overtakes, eight failed, 12 successful defences, five failed. Pretty good afternoon for him. And we did get some experience for Ollie as well. I'm hoping that you can still hear me while I'm using the, uh, the dual sense. That's my uh, microphone. Got everything done with the sponsors, uh, but we didn't actually set any targets tonight. So it's just the incentives, but we cleared all of those. reconnected and there we go so we've completed the uh, suspension project nice that means we can get uh, a new development project underway perhaps Let's have a look at our inbox uh, so we need to replace the side pods on mixed car and the chassis on Oscar's car no issues there uh, drive attention has not improved so that's going to hurt Mick for a little while in terms of his overall confidence rating. That will resolve itself soon, though, hopefully. There is the confirmation that the suspension project is done. So you can see the gains that we've made little bits here and there. So let's see. I think the next part we need to do is going to be a rear wing because we're on generation three parts everywhere except for the rear wing so uh, let's see what do we need to research then chassis has got one project done one on the side pods one on the suspension Let's get another chassis project done. We're out of hours now, but we've got a new ATR opening up in 14 days. We'll wait until that kicks in before we do some more development and we'll split the hours in half on the uh, on, on two parts <clears throat> in the next ATR. A new rear wing and probably a new side pod. Uh, we'll see. Maybe a new chassis. So let's get uh, some movement done on the sliders. What do I want to improve the most? Uh, drag and airflow, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. We'll go with two engineers, get that underway. change over those parts replacement side pods are without spares now on the side pod but we are going to have to make another one because we are at medium risk now on Oscar's car let's replace the chassis still got a spare chassis that's good let's make one more side pod go uh, rear wings at medium risk and that one's okay. Let's make one more rear wing. There we go. We're still okay on other parts for now. Four days to go till we get the weather report for Austria. Let's 
check in with our facilities. Anything broken? Not yet. Almost. And almost. All right. Got some more scouting done. Let's take a look at the results. So, Stuart King. An engineer we won't be signing, but just wanted to see what his stats were. Actually, his composure is looking pretty good. 90, that's a good solid stat there. He's 50 years old, so he's not going to improve too much more. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Anne, a new uh, FP3, uh, Formula 3 driver, I believe. Yeah. Well, oh, that's a mighty stat there for, a, for an F3 driver. She might be our next reserve. Once we promote Ollie up to the car. Definitely bookmark her. She's uh, one to keep an eye on. Who else do we need to uh, unpin? Uh, let's have a look at Marcel. Another young driver. F2 driver. Mighty cornering stat. Terrible braking and reactions, though. So that's not a driver I would consider. Too much work needed to get that driver up to uh, to standard. And Carmen Jimenez, F2 driver. Not great in the cornering. Decent braking. Very good reactions. Very good control. Good accuracy. Terrible smoothness don't think we will consider her either. That's our spare rear wing. That's our spare underfloor. And there is our spare side pod. Beautiful stuff. So, weather report going to be a wet Friday which will affect potentially uh, sprint quality but the uh, qu uh, sprint and the race will both be dry we know how good our car is when it's in dry conditions so I am very hopeful of another strong weekend Max will be potentially a little bit weaker still going into Austria but still good enough for points what is going on with Mercedes and Ferrari though uh, and McLaren as well. They really do need to find some more pace. You no, know, McLaren are probably going to change their powertrains. Mercedes might with one of their cars. I think Bottas has got a bit of a damaged car, but I mean, they're just slow. They're so slow. I'd like to see them pick their pace up a little bit. We've got 26 mil in the bank, which is a lovely amount of cash. It's enough. For me to go ahead and think about well not actually think about but actually go ahead and put in a new upgrade so we know that our suspension simulator is gonna wear out a little bit soon so we're just gonna go ahead and slap an upgrade on that now our facilities are gonna be mighty next season helipad has now dipped we'll give that a quick refurb and we'll do the same with the memory B. let's go ahead and just do an upgrade might as well. I'm going to hold off on the weather center for now. Hospitality's fine. Everything in here is still fine. There we go. 13 and a half mil left in the bank. We are ready for the Australian Grand Prix. Austrian Grand Prix. <laughs> Not the Australian. We just had that in real life. That's why I'm mixing the two up. Uh, so, yeah, 
that will be tomorrow's uh, race weekend, uh, heading to the Red Bull ring. I desperately want to beat Red Bull on their own track. That would be glorious. We came close last year, couldn't quite do it. This year, I fully expect us to be able to do it. So, uh, yeah, join me at the usual time of 8 p.m. tomorrow here in the UK for uh, round 10 as we head to the Red Bull ring in Austria and uh, give Red Bull a bloody nose on their home track. Until then, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob, and I'll be back with some more F1 Manager very soon. <laughs>